So we are here at the brand new high roller room at the Mandalay Bay, uh, hanging out with Robert Riley. He's the pit boss here. And even though we know how to play blackjack, well, we understand it. We really don't understand it. So Robert's going to really explain the game to us like a real gentleman, like a guy who knows the game. Mm. So Robert, f first of all, how long have you been a pit boss? Uh, I've been in the business 31 years. I've been in a suit for probably 30 of them. Really? So I've been a supervisor of Buffett. Over for 30, 30 years, years yeah. and you started one year as a dealer and you just i started as a dealer i'm like a third or fourth generation of my family the day i turned 21 my grandfather took me down to the el cortez and told his friend to put me to work and so from an etiquette standpoint at the higher rollers table what are the do's and don'ts or is there anything we should know since we do play five dollar punch <laughs> no it's basically the same you're, you're the rules are the same you're gonna you know you're come to make some money on you know on gambling now, well, right now it says dealer must draw 16, stand, stand on, on all 17s. 17. Can you explain that? Yes. If a dealer has 16 or less, he will hit his hand. He has to. He has to. Once he hits 17, at this particular table, we stand on all 17s. Different tables have different rules up here that you'll see. All right, so does this put the odds more in our favor? This is better for the, for the customer, yes. I got you. Well, right. let, let's deal a hand. I'll sure, well, yeah. Well, make, I just, I was... make some bets. Woo. See, this is bad. So he, you have to stand on that, right? I have to stand if I if have that's a, 10, a 17. 10 or an ace underneath. Okay. Any other card, I'm going to hit it. Nothing. But if I, I want to carry play. myself like a gentleman and a professional, I'm doing this and this as opposed I would to stay yeah, You always do that because of the surveillance team. Gotcha. They have to see what's going on. So that's why we have Are surveillance team. Are you staying on that? I think I, think I, I, think I should because you have a 7. Now, Smart play. So. He has to stand on 17, so the odds would be you'd have a 10 under there, right? But if it's a nine, then you gotta hit again. Now if I hit, I have a lot of chances of going over. I don't like that. 20. You only have really one chance of going over. Well, if it's a 10, a, a face card. Yeah, face card, that's but now a there, lot of faces. There's, there's a nine, eight, seven going down, so you got more than the way going up. Well, I was gonna you say got nine me. to five. I was five. gonna tell you to hit me. Hit me All right, me. good job. 19. Now, stay. Stay. All right, dealer's got 15. It's 18. Unbelievable. Since you did again. the right play, you won. Hey. Sorry, but you played it correctly. You just hey, Robert, do didn't me have fame. the luck. Do me a favor. Throw that in my <laughs> uh, kick. So All right. So here's some scenarios you presented us with. So, Robert, you tell me two eighths. What do I do? I suggest because the dealer has a six up that you split that hand. What does a that A split is a pair. You can split any pair. Any pair? Any pair. So is this an even? Item? Even face cards you can split. If they're 10 through king and then one's a 10 and one's a king, you can split them their same but value. Is this that. an ideal split though, two eights? Yes. Okay. So show us what happens, what, what, what he should do to split it. So, so he splits you, eight, you put your uh, $300, you match your bet on the side. Take it like that. You've got your two hands out here. Now we're gonna only go towards the first hand. We play them separately. We don't play them together. Like, all right. Mm -hmm. So now you have a 15 against a six. You make your decision. What would be your advice with 15 showing? 15 six? against a six. I'm gonna stay. I would say okay. I would stay as well. Stay exactly. on that one. All right. Now you got a 17 against six. You're also gonna stay on that. 17. All right. Dealer has 16, and dealer bust. Yeah. You win both hands. Right. This is, a, no, this is a different type of double down. Just. Now, what makes this so unique? Because it's a 3 or a 13? What, it's, what three, makes... it's 3 or 13, and no matter what I give you, you cannot bust. Okay. Because that's a, it's a, you know, if I put you at 10, now you go to 13. So it's a soft 3. This is a good double because you've got a lot of room for to make improve your hand, and the dealer's got a 6 up, which chances are 90% of the chances he's going to have to... Uh, Hit that hand. Okay. The only way he's not going to hit that hand is if there's an ace underneath. So now I can either go the same or less. We'll we'll we'll, we'll do that thing. Yeah, right. You're going to double down for less, and I would actually call that out as a dealer. Double for less, so everybody around me knows. Well, then how about so I match it? Then that's then it's just a straight double. <laughs> straight yeah. double. And I just do your hit. Double down, you got a 12. You can't improve on that hand no more. You're not allowed to hit it or anything. Right. Dealer's got a 15. Bust. Dealer bust. Nice. This man went undefeated in the second. Yeah, he hasn't lost yet. Let's play one hand and let's see what happens. 
Because you haven't lost a hand. Yet. I haven't lost a hand yet, and I'm feeling lucky. And on top of that, this isn't real money. <laughs> so why not? Let's do it. <laughs> I get it too. Hey. Oh my gosh. All right, you got a twelve. I got. I got a hit. That's right. Very good move. Hit. Nineteen. I'm staying. I'm staying. Oh. Oh my. Nineteen. Oh. Gosh, oh, that is. Well, I, I guess everything. I'm picking up dinner. It's awesome, like the, like Brett. the guy on vacation right now. Well, kids, this is why you shouldn't gamble and <laughs> blow it all on one hand. Hey, Robert, I really appreciate you having us, man. You're, You're welcome. Gentleman. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate you.